Happy Children's Day, everyone. And um, let me speak to you guys as little children, if you would allow me to, so that uh, hindi rin po ako kabahan. Um, we all know the story of David and Goliath, right? Uh, it's a story about a uh, giant and a little kid. It's a story about faith and fear. A little disclaimer po, I'm not an expert on children. I'm not, uh, I'm not a father yet. I'm not an expert on children, although I have studied to become a teacher. Uh, but I, I would say that I'm a keen observer of children. And I've been around kids uh, during my college years with the street children. And I've been exposed also to indigenous peoples. And I've always been drawn to children. And for some reason, the kids are also drawn to me. Maybe because I look like a clown or I don't know, I, I think they find me funny. At the same time, when Pastor Butch and uh, Ninang Manch asked me if I could speak today, I thought, uh, why me? Maybe because Children's Day, kailangan po nila ng isip bata. So, I would consider myself and I would proudly say na isip bata po ako. And I will, I will tell you why it's a good thing in a while. So there, I've been teaching here in Singapore for five years already and a couple of years in the, in the Philippines. So we always talk about parents during Children's Day, although that's the irony of it, diba? Right? Uh, every Children's Day, our focus is on the parents, on how they can train the kids, on how, you know, to, to rear their child in, in God's way. But today, let us change the focus and let's look at children and how we can be inspired by looking at the ways of a child. Let's talk about the little big faith. All right, now today let's look at children and let's look at the life of young David. Uh, so what is it about children? Hindi po kami ni Robin. I just got that from the internet. <laughs> Although, pwedeng kamukha po namin. <laughs> and we will discover today how a childlike faith in God will enable us to do the impossible. Now what is it about children that is worth talking about? Uh, children are not perfect. Who, I, I think the parents, you don't have to raise up your hands. I know you agree with me. The children are not perfect, you know, but there are many qualities of a child that is worth emulating. For one, children are naturally obedient. You could disagree with me because I know children can be defiant as well, but naturally, children are obedient. You know, when, uh, when I'm teaching the kids, sometimes... Kapag bago sila sa school, they would have separation anxiety. They would cry for no reason at all. And one of the ways to make the child stop is not to focus on his crying, but to distract him. So sometimes what we do, you know, when the child is crying, for example, Easy Boy, Easy Boy is crying. Easy Boy, get the tissue and wipe yourself. He would, you know, he will not stop crying, but he would follow. He would cry, but still get the tissue and wipe his nose. Uh, during my first years in teaching, I was kind of amazed by this fact na how children are so obedient. That, you know, no matter what they're doing, even if they're playing, you know, if you ask them, can you help me throw this? They would really, you know, put down their toys, pick it up, and throw it. It's so amazing that I wish we were all like that. Children are naturally obe obedient, but again, they're not perfect. David, as you see sa play natin, David was an obedient child. Uh, David was serving as a musician in King Saul, with King Saul, but he never forgot his duty as a shepherd. You know, uh, the Bible says he goes back and forth from Saul to their house to tend to the sheep. So he's a very obedient child. And for a child, I'm just imagining what an exciting thing it is, you know, to, 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 to think about, wow, a battle. You know, kids, they like to play with swords and fighting games. And I'm imagining it would be such... You know, an exciting thing for David to go to the battlefield. He could say, Oh, Dad, bakit yung mga kapatid ko, they're in battle. I want to join them too. You know, but, but he stayed. He became a shepherd. He, he stayed as a shepherd. And then when the opportunity came that Jesse, David's dad, asked him to go, go, to, go to your brothers and send provisions, he, he immediately followed. And the Bible says in, in verse 20, he even rose early left the sheep with the keeper, and went as Jesse commanded. His simple and unquestioning obedience led him to God's plan. Can you imagine if David 
didn't follow, if David had some tampo, you know, kids like, um, Dad, di mo ako pinasama eh. Dito na lang ako. Tapos ngayon, utusan mo ko. ba? Diba? Parang, I, I, I just stay here. I will just ask one of your sh- servants to, to bring the provisions. But no, David followed. As children, we are wired to be obedient. But what happens when we get older? We grumble. We take shortcuts. We become lazy. We become smart. By the way, children, most of the time, they learn to be disobedient because of us adults. You agree? Like what this picture shows, the overhead bridge is over there, but they chose to cross on the road with the child. So the child would probably do the same. When we get older, we learn to grumble, we learn to be, um, we learn to bargain, and we become too smart. One of our favorite things to do in our house is to wash the dishes. I hate washing dishes. So when I was little, um, my mom would my mom would give us tasks. So ako being my being the pangana, I don't like washing dishes. So what I do, I would set up the table. So I would tell my brother, oh, I set up the table. You wash the dishes. You know, just to get away from that task that we don't like, we would you know sometimes I'll use my status. Kuya ako, kuya. So adults think also like that. You know, we always, uh, when given a task, we always ask, what's in it for me? But a child would never think that way. When you give him a task, he will never think, what is it for me? What would it benefit me? It's us adults who sometimes add those little things in the child's mind that corrupts their mind. Oh, you do this, I will give you a toy. You see how they're programmed now? I will do this so I won't, won't get spanking. They don't follow anymore because they simply follow. And that is one of the qualities that we should aspire to have. You know, that, that, that quality that we just obey. We obey because the person asking us to do something is worth obeying. Many men of God never lost this childlike ability to obey. Noah, we all know Noah, right? He created an ark. He was obedient to the last nail to create a never-before-seen ark to prepare for a never-before-seen rain because he never experienced, they never experienced such kind of rain and they never seen such big a ship before. But he was obedient to the last detail. If you read the Bible about the story of Noah, he never asked God, you know, why this, why that? He never, he never argued with God, oh, Lord, maybe make the ship a little smaller because we don't have enough trees. You know, he was not like that. Abraham was obedient when asked to sacrifice his son. And Isaac, the small boy, was also obedient. If it was me, you know, Dad, bakit mo ko pinapahiga dito? Diba? And, and, and even to the point, to the last second, that, that Abraham would kill the son, we never heard anything from Isaac. And I, would, I believe, you know, the Bible is not silent about it. The Bible didn't try to omit that part that Isaac complained? I don't think so. Because if Isaac complained, I think it's worth mentioning. Right? So we can see the obedience of the, of the people in the Bible. And it's a kind of obedience that we also should aspire. And Jesus is a perfect example of obedience. He is king. He is our Lord. But he was obedient to the cross. He was obedient to the will of God. He could have said, hey, I'm God. You know, if, if, if Jesus was thinking to the same thoughts that we, we do, adults do, maybe he would go, Oh, Peter, ikaw na lang. You know? He could, he could have asked someone else. But no, he was obedient. To have childlike faith is to be obedient. So let us not lose the childlike quality in a child, uh, in us. You know, this, I, I hope starting today, starting this Children's Day, we look at children and not see them as makukulit, as stubborn. But let's try to see the good in them on how pure and how innocent they are and how obedient they are. Children have a great sense of wonder. We all agree to this, right? A child could go on and on looking at something for hours. You know, they have this great sense of wonder, right? And they always ask why. You know, when they get older, they always ask, uh, why, 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 does the, why is the sun yellow? 
then if you say, oh, because the sun is like this, why, why is there fire? Why is there like that? It's, it never ends, right? And when, even when they're smaller, when you see a child picking up something, putting it in his mouth, it's not because he's hungry. It's because they're curious. They want to know how it feels like in their mouth. They want to know how your arm tastes like. Maybe they would bite you. Children are naturally curious. I can see that the, the, the youth, they're smiling. Maybe they, they still put things in their mouth to, ta to taste it or something. <laughs> I don't know. And children, they always ask questions. You see this kid's face like, why? How did I wake up on the bed when I slept on the couch? You know, things like that. You know, funny questions from children. And because of this, because they always ask why, they are, they're also always easily fascinated. You know this magic trick? I know the adults know this. You know this magic trick when you put your, thing, your thumb like this and like that? They will, when, when you show this to a little child, they'll go, What? Do it again, do it again. They will always say that, do it again. But we all know that it's just a trick. Let me show you guys. Kids, look. No reaction. But you know what I mean. <laughs> they will be amazed by little things. You know, and, it, and it's worth being like that. You know? Let, let's never lose our curiosity. Let's never you know, lose that, that uh, sense of wonder. Uh, yesterday, uh, I tried to jog. I tried to. And yesterday, I tried to jog and saw this, this plant, uh, this tree with leaves of green and then starting to become pink. And I wonder, how did it become pink? You know, those little things that we, we forget to, to, to notice anymore. You know, one time I showed this video to, to my, my kids. Uh, we were talking about growth and things that grow. So I showed them a video, of uh, a time-lapse video of a seed from a seed growing into a sprout, you know, having roots, and then, you know, growing into a plant. You know, uh, I, I think adults know how, how this works, right? You need the sun, you need water, you need the perfect soil, the perfect condition. So I, start watching, I started watching it with the little children. You know, as adults, maybe we see it, oh, nothing, it's just a plant, you know, growing, you know, with roots and leaves like that. But when I started to watch it, like how the little children were watching it, I started to get amazed too. You know, wow, how did that root come out of that seed? And how does it look like, it, like it's dancing? You know? Every day it's growing and growing. So when we, we borrow the eyes of the children and restore that, that sense of wonder in us, we will see the world more differently. And you know what? I think if we restore that sense of wonder in us, we will be happier. Because we will be happy with the little things that happens in our lives. You know, oh Lord, my salary was on time. You know, simple things like that. You know, or, or, or wow, I, the, the bus was on time. You know, uh, or when I got off the house, oh, the taxi was there. You know, but we never, we adults, we think of the big things all the time. You know, I think it's worth Noticing the little things that happens in our lives and restore that sense of wonder in us. Let me ask you this question. Does God's word still amaze you? You know, last week, Pastor Butch was, was talking about uh, Philip, right? And it was amazing, you know. Uh, you guys watch X-Men, right? You know, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler teleported. You know, teleported, he disappeared from one place and then appeared in another place like that. That happened to Philip. Right? So, maybe he's an X-Men. <laughs> <No. laughs> Does God's Word still amaze you? Because, you know, the Bible is so rich and it's so wonderful with amazing things. You know, I always mention this, that there's this part in the Bible that the earth opened up and ate up the people. And if you have those kinds of Bible with the red prints on it, does it amaze you that our Lord Jesus Christ said those very words that we are reading? Isn't that amazing? Right? So, and by the way, Goliath, the story of David and Goliath, it's not a fairy tale. It really happened. And uh, you know how they pictured Goliath as a giant? During those times, there were really people like that. So it's not a make-believe. So my point is, I hope the Word of God still amazes us. Never, let's never lose that sense of wonder 
in looking at the little things and looking at the Word of God and be amazed. David was a curious boy. You know, when, when he went to the camp to bring the provisions, he kept on asking the, the people, what will be done to, for the man who kills this Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And you know what his adult brother said? Now, what are you doing, David? Keep quiet. You know, but David insisted. He said, what have I done? Can't I even speak? You know, for, for a little child, he doesn't care about status. You know, when adults are talking, a child would butt in, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Because he doesn't care that you're adults and I'm a child. For a child, he's just curious. Children always say, do it again. Right? They always say, do it again. And the grown-up person does it again until he is nearly tired. Have you experienced this, adults and parents? When you did something and the kids love it? Daddy, again, 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 do it again. For grown-up people are not strong enough to exalt in monotony. Children, they can sit for hours doing the same thing over and over again. As long as they like it. But you know what? God is also like this. This guy, G.K. Chesterton, assumed that maybe God is also like little children. Maybe he does things again and again. Every day, God never gets tired of telling the sun to go up. You know, do it again, son. Do it again, trees. Do it again, rain. And he said, you know, for we have sinned and grown old, and our father is younger than we. God seems to be younger than us. God seems to, you know, have, still have that sense of wonder. You know, maybe when God created the heavens and the earth, he, he thought it was good. You know, and he keeps on making those good things over and over and over and over again. To have childlike faith is to be in awe of God. Do you wake up in the morning and ask God, Lord, amaze me today. Show me how awesome you are today. Surprise me with, with great blessings. Reveal yourself to me. Usually our prayers would go like, Lord, give me this. Give me that. Don't let me, you know, you know keep me away from harm's way. You know, and all for us, all for us. But we never ask God, Lord, can you reveal yourself to me today? You know, it's, it's such a great thing if we feel the presence of God in our lives. But do we ask for it? Do we ask for it? Do we say, do it again, Lord? When something happens to you, you know, God blessed you or, or did something really wonderful in your life. Do we still ask God, Lord, do it again? I want to feel that again. As Christians, when we see a new convert, a, a new believer, we would say we would see him so on fire, you know, preaching the word, you know, being so happy. Oh, I got saved. You know, I I I I finally know the truth. And we adult Christians would say, Ah, bagong Christian kasi kaya ganyan pa. Ah, bagong Christian kasi kaya on fire pa. Ang init niya, no? Kasi bagong Christian pa lang eh. Or when people go from camp from a youth camp. Wow, they're so on fire. You know, and, and we adults, we become cynical. Oh, they're so on fire. Oh, saglit lang yan. Pag tumagal-tagal, wala na rin yung fire. Who's better? The one on fire or we who are cynical who lost the fire in us? You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's better for us, you know, to, to, to be like little children and retain that sense of awe. Become that new, new Christian, new believer and restore that, that fire in our hearts. You know, the new believer is better off than us who's been a Christian for many years and become jaded and become cynical and become skeptics who always like to criticize new believers for saying that, oh, they're on fire because they just knew the Lord. But isn't it ironic that those who knew the Lord for a longer time should be more on fire than the person who just came to the Lord. So to have childlike faith is to be in awe of God. You know, scientists and, and doctors, I think they have a, a, kumbaga, a bird's eye view of God's magnificence because they study the human body and we are all created by God and, and if we, the, they study how the body works, you know, everything would point to God because only God can create a mechanism like the human being work so perfectly. 
All right, so I, I, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep that sense of awe in you. When you look at a beautiful flower, you know, there's this saying, stop and look at the flower. Right? The right? saying, you know my point, right? Stop and smell the roses. Stop and try to see God in the little things that happens in our lives. Let's not always ask for the big things in life. Lord, give me this big house that I'm waiting for. You know, and, and because we're still waiting and waiting and waiting, we lose sight of the little things that God is providing for us every day. God is blessing us with our jobs. We have a boss who's good to us. And all those little things. Now, thirdly, right, children trust completely. Now, if there's one thing about children that is really great, it is their ability to trust completely. They have no self, sense of uh, self-dependency. You know, children never worry if they will have the next meal. They don't even worry that they're going to be alive tomorrow because they know they will be. They don't care if, if they're going to have dinner tonight because they know that the parents would provide dinner for them. They have no sense of self-dependency and that makes them free. That makes them great. They have no fear of the next meal. Or look at this picture. This girl, right? This girl has no fear that his dad would catch him. But when we get older, we become smarter and we become, uh, I guess, more fearful because we learn to see the dangers around us. But a child who's pure and, and, you know, and, and uh, uncorrupted trusts completely. Not only that children have total dependency and total trust to their fathers and, and moms, but they also have absolute admiration for them. I have this uh, student, his name is Kaden. Um, all of a sudden, this, this kid always comes up with random things. He will come, oh, Mr. Randy, Mr. Randy. By the way, they call me Mr. Randy. And Mr. Randy, um, you know, my father said, if you eat too much sweet, the worm would grow in your stomach. Then I, I was trying to tell him, who told you that? My dad. Oh, maybe your dad was just trying to tell you that eating too much sweet is not good for you. No, 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 no. The worm would grow in my tummy. That's what my daddy say. I tried to reason with him again. Oh, because when you eat too much sweet, your tummy will get painful. So maybe it feels like you have a worm in your tummy. No, no, really, a worm. So, it, it, you know, it, I, ha I had to surrender to the kid. Because who am I to his father? Right? He will always believe his father. So not only that the children trust their father completely, they also admire them. For them, his father is the strongest, his super dad. So maybe, maybe it's worth being like little children. You know, it's, it's worth having that total admiration for God and that complete dependence on God. David is, strong, is courageous, not because of his own strength, but because of his experience with his father. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37, David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Now, that's, that's where David is coming from. You know, David was not brave to fight Goliath because he's so good with the sling and the stone. No, not that. You know, his courage came from his dependency on God because he experienced God. Now, let's look at Goliath. Saul and the men saw Goliath. Goliath is about nine feet tall and he is heavily armored. All right? The Bible says his, his height was six cubits in a span. That's about nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. That's about 57 kilograms. Can you imagine carrying 57 kilograms? Anyways, Goliath is so strong. And that's what Saul and the men saw. David, I have a question. Did David see another person in, in Goliath? No. David saw the same Goliath. But he saw Goliath differently. He didn't see Goliath as a strong man with heavy armor. 
He saw Goliath as an uncircumcised Philistine, someone not of the Lord's, someone who's defying the Lord's army. They both saw the same foe, right? But David saw the same God. Saul knew David's incompetence. David is a little boy. What can he do? But David knew God's omnipotence. Now, we like this. We like boxing, diba? All right, this is a tale of the tape. So, Manny Pacquiao versus Mayweather, hopefully. Right? This is what we do when we encounter problems, on we, when we are faced with something. We look at where we stand, and you look at your opponent. Diba? So, Pacquiao has 50 wins, 3 losses, and 2 draws. But Mayweather has 40 wins. But because we're Filipinos, we're rooting for Pacquiao, right? But we always look at the odds, right? Oh, my problem is so big, I'm only so small, right? Now, let's look at the tail of the tape for David and Goliath. Goliath probably has 2,000 wins, zero losses and zero draws. Knockouts, maybe 2,000 also. By the way, this is, these are just my assumptions, all right? Oh, his height is nine feet. His reach, maybe 200 inches. And his stable where he trained is the Philistine camp. David, two wins against a lion and a bear. Two knockouts. Maybe his height is 5'3", because he just hit puberty. I think David was about a teenager when he fought Goliath. And his reach, not counted by inches, but his reach is God. He can reach God. Right? And his stable where he trained, in God's army, in the fields, with the shepherd. So that's the tale of the tape. If you look at it, it may seem unfair. It may seem that Goliath has an unfair advantage. But David has God. Now, childlike faith in God enables us to do the impossible. David was able to do the impossible. Because although Goliath is stronger, smarter, or more skillful than a bear or a, or a, or a lion, but David has the same God. And that's what made him so invincible against Goliath. Childlike faith in God enables us to do the impossible. Peter, when he saw Jesus walking on water, because of his faith in God, his childlike faith in God, Peter said, Lord, is that you? If it's you, you know, invite me to come over. And when he stepped over, he must be smiling like a little child walking on water. You know, if it was me, I'd be, wow, maybe I'll take a picture. Oh, look, I'm walking on water. Diba? It's his childlike faith that enabled him to do the impossible. Walk on water. But then the adult, the adult in him kicked in. Diba? He started to doubt. He started to, to fear. Because he's an adult after all. He saw the depths of the water. He saw the waves. But for a child, for a moment, he was like a child. You know, Lord, let me walk on water. See, childlike faith in God enables us to really do the impossible. What are the impossibles in our lives? For some people, it's impossible to smile when your loved one is in the hospital. But we guys can do it because of our childlike faith in God. For some people, it's, it's hard to, to, to be happy and to, to still attend church even if they lost their jobs. But because of their child, childlike faith in God, their complete dependence on God, they can do the impossible. See, David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Now, I want you to replace lion and the bear with your personal experience. The Lord who rescued me from my sickness before, from my unemployment, will rescue me from this problem that I'm facing now. The Lord who rescued me from my problems before, you know, is the same Lord who will rescue me now. In Psalm 18, David said, He rescued me because He delighted in me. And the good news, guys, God delights in us like a father delights in his child. You know, let's not grow old, but stay childlike. Goliath may be a different foe, but David has the same God. We will face problems after problems after problems. Life's like that. You know? Different problems. After this problem, there's one more. After this, another. Another and another. You know, but the good thing is we have the same God. To have childlike faith 
is to be absolutely dependent on God. Not on our own. Now, I'm not telling us to be childish, but I'm encouraging everybody to be childlike. God doesn't want us to be childish. In the Bible, it says, uh, you got to leave your childish ways behind. God wants us to grow. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. That's what 1 Corinthians 13, 11 said. All right? So God doesn't want us to be childish. God wants us to grow. But God wants us to retain our childlike qualities. In Matthew 18, verse 1 to 4, it says, at the time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven? He called the children and had them stand among them. He said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, obedient in awe of Him, you know, and absolutely trusting, and not depending on themselves to get to heaven, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven unless you become like little children. Childlike faith in God enables us to do the impossible. We're always facing the impossible every day. But our childlike faith in God will enable us to conquer giants, to overcome struggles. But how can we awaken the child in us? We have to be obedient. And to be obedient, we have to practice obedience. Obedience in small things. You know, we adults sometimes, oh, oh sige Lord, I will tithe. I will give my tithes, pero pwede bang every other month lang? You know, we try to work our way around things. We try to shortcut. And we have to, 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 to restore that awe, that sense of wonder in us and be absolutely dependent on God. Now, this is one of my students. His face, he looks very, uh, in Tagalog, pilyo. Sobrang kulit yung batang yan. Pag pinagalitan mo, you know, after a second, he would, say, he would say sorry, he would cry. But afterwards, he would do the same thing again. He's like that. And I know some of you guys are like that. So, <laughs> so he's like that. So one time we were talking about what makes you unique. So I asked the children, what makes you special? What makes you special? So they all say, oh, I'm special because uh, I'm a princess. I'm special because I can dance very well. I'm special because I can draw. And True to him, to himself, he's being makulit. So I, I called his attention. How about you? And to my surprise, this is what he said. He thought for a while, with his silly face, with his chinky eyes, kasi siya. He was thinking, and he suddenly the, his face light up, and he answered, "Jesus." He said, "Jesus." I was, what? Jesus. I'm special because Jesus. And, you know, his friend say, said, who's Jesus? You know, and I was like, I was speechless with joy. You know, a little child, he knows what makes him special. If you want to have a childlike faith, you need to know whose child are you. And we are God's. Let us be completely dependent on God. Let us be in awe of our Father. Have, have total admiration to our Father. And let's be obedient. Not because of the rewards that He will give. Let's be obedient because He is the one asking us to do it. If you want to have childlike faith, you need to know whose child are you and get to know Him more and more. And finally, let me leave you with this statement. We as Christians, we need to grow older. I'm sorry, we don't just get older. We need to grow up and we need to be childlike grown-ups. Let's not stay childish in the ways of a child, but let us grow up, but still retaining the childlike qualities in us. So happy Children's Day, and thank you. for it. God bless you all.